architect that drove the Muslim League of Jinnah to split India. Listen in to the Prime Minister. Congress ne jo gosana patra banaya hai, usme bhi Muslim League ki chaap hai. Saathiyo, Congress ko aaj bhi देश के लोगों की जरूरत से कोई लेना देना नहीं है ये भाजपा सरकार है जो हर गारंटी जमीन पर उतार रही है द कांग्रेस इज हिट बैट हार्ड एट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर अक्यूजिंग हिम ऑफ प्लेइंग द रिलीजन कार्ड टू डाइवर्ट फ्रॉम रियल इश्यूज दैट कन्फ्रंट द कंट्री दैट द मैनिफेस्टो सीक्स टू एड्रेस लिसन इन टू जयराम रमेश ऑफ द कांग्रेस According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. Let me let me ask the Prime Minister. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, founder of the Bharati Jan Sang, was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahasabha of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the founder of the Jan Sang, was in league with the Muslim League in Sindh and Northwest Frontier. It was Mr. L K Advani and Mr. Jaswant Singh, leaders of the BJP. who went to pakistan and eulogized the leader of the muslim league the man one of the men responsible for the partition of india mohammad ali jinnah it was not the congress party which was in bed with the muslim league it was the Bar the founder of the bharati janata he wants to replace this constitution of india of which the pillars are one of the pillars is secularism the other pillar is social justice there are other pillars as well and deeply uncomfortable with this Uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar's constitution is thinking of a new constitution. No, as a political party, anyone can set a target, right? I'm not talking about you. But the real reason for the target is to rewrite the constitution. I mean, is this a language that behooves the Prime Minister? While Jairam Ramesh is right that the Hindu Mahasabha, led at that time by V. Savarkar, and of course. Uh, Mr Mukherjee supported the Muslim League governments in provinces like Bengal and Sindh he's not placing the entire context for why this was done the facts are that the Hindu Mahasabha shared power with the Muslim League in tune with Savarkar's policy of coat responsive cooperation of sadhya anukul sahakarya earlier lokmanya tilak had espoused the same policy would the congress accuse lokmanya tilak of being a rump end of the muslim league it was savarkar's policy to occupy governmental posts to safeguard hindu interests the soundness of this policy was proven in provinces like bengal and sindh for instance when the muslim league ministry in sindh passed a resolution in favor of the formation of pakistan the lone dissenting voice was that of the hindu mahasabha minister importantly the so called nationalist muslim allah baks who was a congress member abstained when this resolution was introduced in the sindh assembly aside from these hard facts there is also the matter viewers and let me very quickly apprise you of this the interim government of india was formed by jawaharlal nehru as its leader It was the only cabinet in India's history where the Congress and the Muslim League shared power. The interim government had autonomy and remained in power until the end of the British Raj. Aside as I said from these hard facts there are some similarities between the Congress manifesto and the Muslim League's pre-independence resolutions at least when it comes to one aspect of social justice. The Congress manifesto says and you can see it on your screens viewers we will encourage reform of personal laws with consent of concerned communities now the muslim league resolution was quite clear no bill shall be passed if 3/4 members of any community oppose for interests of said community the congress manifesto says we will ensure minorities receive a fair share of opportunities without discrimination the muslim league resolution says all legislators shall be constituted on principle of effective representation of minorities congress manifesto says we will uphold fundamental right to practice faith and rights guaranteed to religious minorities 
The Muslim re resolution says, Constitution must protect and promote Muslim culture and due share in aid given by the state. The Congress in the meantime has approached the Election Commission seeking action against the Prime Minister for vitiating the communal peace. But the BJP says that it has persuasive arguments to defend its stand. And let's have a look at how the BJP intends, if it comes to that, to defend its stand. On the point that the Congress will ensure that every citizen minorities have the freedom of choice of dress, food, language and personal laws, the BJP's take is or its defense is that the Congress will not support the UCC and continue with binary laws that differentiate between citizens which, according to the BJP, is divisive. On the point of the fact that the Congress will restore the Molana Azad scholarships for studying abroad and increase the number of scholarships, the BJP's take, putative take, will be that positive discrimination on religious lines in education or in any other field goes against the basic ethos of a secular constitution. On the point that the Congress will ensure that banks will provide institutional credit to minorities without discrimination, the BJP's putative take will be that bank credit for activities has been communalized, which once again undermines the secular spirit of the Constitution. On the point that the Congress will ensure that the minorities receive their fair share of opportunities in education, healthcare, public employment, public works, contracts, skill development, sports and cultural activities without discrimination, the BJP's putative defense or take will be that a tacit promise to provide quotas along religious lines has already been struck down by the Supreme Court. Now viewers, the debate is set and the question of course is whether the BJP can validate the Muslim manifesto Bab, whether this actually springs from an attempt to change the discourse or is it actually a divisive proposition by the Congress that they need to actually answer for or explain why in a secular polity religion is being once again invoked as a policy tool to secure advancement and welfare from the government. Now viewers, let's open this up because this is an important debate. Political parties go to voters and they're judged on the basis of such documents. And we are told that in a few days, the BJP itself will also come up with their own manifesto. So there has to be a level playing field and therefore the BJP also will have to explain whether it is playing a divisive role here by invoking or focusing selectively on this one aspect of what has been thought to be quite a bold and liberal policy document. So, Viewers, let's begin. Let me, let me first begin with uh, Dr. Ranganathan and Sanjay Jha to set this up. Tom Badakkan will come in next and then Dr. Suman C. Raman. So, uh, Dr. Ranganathan, how do you see the Prime Minister's attacks on the Congress's manifesto? Is there really a basis? Or let me put it this way. Can the BJP validate in your eyes this Muslim manifesto, Bab? Uh, good, good evening to my fellow panelists. I will either have a divided in destroyed India, had screamed Jinnah. While he managed the former, the Congress is intent upon managing the latter. Because Rahul, appeasement doesn't encourage welfare. Appeasement encourages warfare. The Congress has a chance to show that its manifesto doesn't reflect that of the Muslim League and proving it is against appeasement by saying that it is for the uniform civil code and will not allow Muslim personal laws to run riot by saying that it will ban middle-aged Muslims from marrying children, by saying that its government will control mosques as it does Hindu temples, by saying that it will overturn its overturning of the Supreme Court Shabano judgment, by saying that it will abrogate the Waqf Act that is blatantly discriminatory, by saying that it will abrogate the conjunction of RTE with the 93rd Amendment that allows Muslim schools 
to escape keeping reservations for the economically weaker sections by saying that it will abrogate the hut subsidy by saying that it will not celebrate the hindu mass murderer tipu jayanti that it will not allow roads and towns to be named after genocidal monster aurangzeb by saying that it will stop paying salaries of malvis by saying that it will stop state sanction and funded madrasas if it isn't going to do any of these then how is it manifesto any different from a manifesto drawn by an islamic supremacy agency but this also needs to be said that while the congress is openly appeasing muslims why does the bjp not abrogate all those acts that allow for such appeasement why has the bjp not taken control of the mosque as it has of temples why has the bjp excluded certain communities from the ucc thus allowing the muslims a valid excuse to continue with their personal laws why has the bjp not overturned the overturning of the shabano judgment why has the bjp not renamed babar road not renamed baktiarpur why has the bjp not abrogated the draconian provisions of the rte act the places of worship act the waqf act finally rahul just one second on the biggest accusation that modi is anti minority well here is the hard data and your viewers need to know this minority three crore scholarships 70% girls school dropout rate minorities after 2014 2 million skill train 10% with government jobs 5 crore scholarships free upsc coaching 30% girls school dropout rate in fact modi has given scholarships to more muslim than manmohan singh did has modi reduced amu funding no in fact he has increased it including a 90 crore topping up while our muslim population is 14% as many as 31.3% of homes under awas yojana 33% of funds under kisan samman nidhi 36% beneficiaries under mudra yojana have been muslims pradhan mantri shaadi shagun scheme exclusively for muslims girls who complete their graduation before marriage they will get 51000 rupees housing scaling scholarships government jobs no other prime minister in living memory has comparatively done more for muslims than modi but the truth is everyone is in the game of appeasement while some do it openly others do it quietly okay sanjay jha yeah. i think that we've already sort of laid out what the bjp will say in its defense what do you think the congress needs to say in its defense it can't sorry to say can't sort of get away by suggesting that oh power was shared between you know uh a putative sort of uh, muslim league government uh, at one time and the hindu mahasabha because we know the reasons why that was done and to sort of without context suggest that would be very unfair to the historic record also of course it's not as if the congress uh, did not share power with the muslim league itself so i, I think that's really not the answer to this is it what about tree can't be the answer you you need to come up with something a little more perhaps substantive to uh tonight of course uh, uh set aside the prime minister's bar uh rahul give me an equal amount of time like you gave to the previous sure. panelist and no interruptions please yeah. let me start not waste any time when i first heard the prime minister talk about the muslim league i realized how intellectually Uh, a serious deficit that exists in the bjp led by their prime uh, you know uh, prima donna himself muslim league has he read the congress manifesto has prime minister modi comprehended what is written there i mean is giving farmers an msp a muslim league conspiracy is increasing manrega wage and promising a national minimum wage of 400 a muslim league uh, you know kind of a heist is giving youth a rupees 1 lakh stipend as a right to apprenticeship a muslim league plot is giving women 50% reservation and 1 lakh in their bank accounts every year a muslim league story the truth is narendra modi and the bjp are rattled and i'll tell you why it's an outstanding document and i can list out the number of other things in it but i have addressed the four principal issues you remember rahul narendra modi's famous quote मेरे पास तो एक ही जात है किसान युवा गरीब और महिला द कांग्रेस इज अड्रेस्ड ऑल फॉर बैटिंग ऑन द फ्रंट फुट ओके दैट्स पॉइंट नंबर वन दैट्स वाई द रिएक्शन टू ट्राई एंड सम हाउ टेक अवे द मेरिट्स ऑफ अ कांग्रेस मैनिफेस्टो एंड ट्राई एंड एम्ब्रॉयल इट इन द टिपिकल कम्युनल पोलराइजेशन स्टोरी वेर नरेंद्र मोदी हैज बीन अ मास्टर सिंस गुजरात टू थाउजेंड टू रायट्स नाउ लेट मी एड्रेस योर सेकेंड पॉइंट since the previous panelist waxed eloquent on what has been done for the muslims by this government let me remind him and your viewers that bilkis banu gang raped in the 2002 gujarat riots had the humiliation of actually seeing her rapists being released 
on India's 75th anniversary celebration of the Independence Day with a complete conn connivance of the central government and the Gujarat government. I think we should all, all of us are men on this program. We should all collectively hang our heads in shame as to what do we do to our women in our country. Point number two, you know, yes, the previous panelists right, we've done a lot for the Muslims. There have been so much of lynching in this country <coughs> that it reminds many people of the Ku Klux Klan. It's a disgusting reality you can't run away from. The Nupur Sharma issue actually put India into a crisis, a diplomatic crisis, because of the insult of the Prophet, where the Islamic countries were going to boycott us diplomatically till the government went on his bent knees and said, you know, please forgive it. Last but not the least, amongst hundreds, open call for genocide of Muslims happening in religious congregations. Now your fundamental point, why, why would the Congress say what it does in the manifesto? And Rahul, I really appreciate your allowing for a very free willing conversation. I will take only 30 seconds. In my opinion, a civilized society looks after its minorities. You know, all these NRI diaspora that goes Modi, Modi, Modi every time he goes to Houston and New York are minorities in their country. They like to be respected in America. Then by the same logic, Mr. Modi should realize that respecting minorities, okay. protecting them is your duty. No, I'm just taking two more points. The Congress manifesto, by the way, and if anybody says appeasement, I'll tell you why they're lying. Look at the data. Look at the data on jobs, employment, in judiciary, in police, in admins are not well off. Look okay. at the Sachar committee report before you make those allegations. Okay. And lastly, the Congress on the UCC, what has the Congress said? Minorities. It's not just talk to Muslims. Right. And it said you need to consult. <coughs> Isn't that, by the way, the key hypothesis of the okay. Uniform Civil Code by the Constitution? Tell you, let me tell you, viewers, uh, the reason why the Prime Minister has touched, and I think I, I will get uh, Dr. Ranganathan back into it because a lot of the points that have been made by Sanjay Jha have been made by, against the arguments that Dr. Ranganathan made. So I will bring him back in uh, before I bring in the other two gentlemen. Now, viewers... There is a very important word in the preamble, and it is secularism. So our republic is founded on the basis of it being secular. And if the manifesto itself warps the definition, the constitutionally laid down de definition of one of the important pillars, cornerstones, then it, there is a problem. And that's why the BJP's lead campaigner has focused on that. It's not for me to defend the BJP. I'm only simply putting it out there so that viewers understand. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, farmers, MSP, etc. are not cornerstones of the constitution. They could become results of an impetus that is captured in our uh, constitution. Uh, very importantly, I think Sanjay Jha talked about Bilkis Bano in the state of Muslim women, etc. Now, viewers, if you continue this pernicious tranche of personal laws, you know who gets the most affected? It is Muslim women and extending that logic also to minority women because they are minorities within minorities, the Muslim women and minority women from other minority communities. And of course, we talk about Sartan Se Juda, etc., etc., but we conveniently forget that that is also ultra virus of the constitution. Yes, you have a problem with uh, lynchings, but then you have to talk about the lynchings that come in the pretext of a certain supremacism. Again, that is religiously founded. And we talk about the release of Bilkis Banu, but we forget conveniently about Rajiv killers, etc., etc., who are given all sorts of accolades, etc when they are out of jail. Nonetheless, Dr. Ranganathan, I think some points have been made by Sanjay Jha. You need to come in and defend your position on that. No, I, I don't think uh, my position needs defending because none of the points that I made were rebutted. Sanjay made, my good friend made additional points, which I respect because in their isolation, they are right. But the point is they are hopelessly selective because more Hindus, Dalits and non-Dalits have been lynched by Muslims than Muslims by Hindus. It's a fact, documented fact. And you rightly said, for the atrocious event of Ms. Bilkis Bano to have transpired, there are other events that have transpired that have, for example, the Rajiv Gandhi killers were uh, killer was released, the Coimbatore bombers were released. 
and the pretext of the release was that we do so much for the muslims that was the pretext of releasing them what can be more appeasing than that so i am not here to cast aspersions on what the previous panelists said just one question because i want to quote here what the previous panelists said bobatem he said the manifesto of congress talked about giving 1 lakh to women i want to ask him has he because he is an ex banker does he know how much is it going to cost this promise to the national ex checker does he have the amount can it give yeah, the amount right now yeah yeah what is the amount i have an answer for that i have an answer for that you, you know the why the answer is so easy mr modi's government given that crores the last 5 years just hear me out anand in the last 5 years a corporate, a corporate tax relief of over around 8 lakh crore rupees to the corporate sector when they didn't need it but then obviously they wanted to charm them for as we discovered maybe things like electoral bonds that 8 lakh can more than take care of all the funding 14 lakh npa write off it can take care of a lot of stuff if you remove electoral bonds and the extortion and the crony capitalism india is rich in assets we can disinvest a lot of money most important we distribution of wealth viewers growth, which will give taxable revenue there is no problem that's why no robert badra is joining the bjp <laughs> a contesting maybe from amiti but that i think is a very clever ruse there because i think uh, rahul gandhi is just waiting for the election in wayanad to complete and then he will announce his candidature from amethi uh, but that's a different story altogether let me just bring in dr raman and uh, tom vadakkan tom vadakkan look uh, this is a very serious debate and the prime minister is being accused of focusing on the thin edge of the wedge to once again sort of communalize a manifesto and the election proper etc etc how do you respond to this charge it's being made and dr raman is hearing you because he'll want to rebut well rahul what sanjay ja missed he's a dear friend of mine but you know he is such a blindfolded supporter of the congress though in suspended animation but he's a dear friend so i i oh, i forgot you guys were seen. for very long uh, fact, compatriots yes sorry go ahead yes the shariat compli- uh, compliant manifesto is the issue now it reflects the dreams and the visions of jinnah and we underwent that huge tragedy of partition my friend it's all okay to say that congress is pro minority i am a minority and there are various other minority community uh, minorities in this country but this specific love for muslims has a lot to do with the current reality the current reality is the crown prince is contesting for a seat which is i wouldn't call it shariat compliant but yes a huge followers are there so this is essentially motivated and reasoned out primarily to target that target audience you understand what a target audience is you are a, a person who has been in uh, in this business hmm. and that is the usp that the congress is trying to do and the reality is when they do this kind of an exercise what happens is they open the do- they open the doors for criticism and now this whole business of triple talaq there is hint in your manifesto which says that it's going to be reworked there is also hint of ch- child marriage your opposition to ucc is a standard uh, line and why because again this community is your word bank and these are the realities that are happening there and i need to tell you there's also this whole business of in your manifesto wearing of non essential religious clothing that is hijab in educational institutions under the grab of right of freedom of religion i am a christian i have a lot of practices in the church 
tomorrow i go to an institute or my son goes to an institute and say i would like to dress up like what i do in church is that acceptable there is a uniform which is a school uniform or a college uniform and that gives equality to students and that brings up a atmosphere of coexistence okay but when you try and do this kind of operation what happens sanjay is you are already dividing the young mind okay now a quick response I, one, one second let, let me get in dr raman first and then we'll have a second round of uh, rebuttals sure. okay dr raman uh, i think substantially the bjp is saying that look secularism has been pretty much shredded uh rahul um first of all it is very unfortunate to see that we are back to the um era of you know going and communalizing the election scene now first of all there is no need this should have been an election which should have been fought on the record of the last 10 years and nothing else instead we are back to what uh, jinnah said or what muslim league did and what happened in 1936 1943 1941 it is a very very sad state of of affairs why can't the bjp say look this election is based on what our track record is over the last 10 years now go there and if you feel that the track record is good enough vote for us and 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 be done with it and at the end of the day this is what many of us knew was going to happen we were going to go back to the attempt to polarize the electorate to raise the bogey of the of of uh, of the muslim uh, hindu katre mein hai in various forms now what form it comes in uh, in each election it varies but eventually the subliminal message and in fact it is no longer even a subliminal message it's a very open message and after having been in power for 10 years what is the necessity to again go back to this kind of a uh, of a campaign it is very unfortunate and uh, the congress manifesto the nyay patra is something that is fundamentally you know i would say radical in many ways but it has it has struck a chord i don't agree with all the things in the manifesto and i i have also said in many many uh, uh, fora that there should have been something which appealed which made it more catchy to all segments of society but clearly to the poorer sections of india those who are facing the burden of inequity this uh, manifesto is something that is likely to appeal and in that case if that manifesto is, uh, is likely to appeal i don't see how a hindu muslim rhetoric is going to derail that appeal okay. at least not in several states of the state okay. yes the northern belt is pretty much a done deal but beyond that i don't see how hindu muslim is actually going to help the bjp no but let me ask you a counter question doctor let me ask you a counter question you know the prime minister does make it a point to list his government's achievements in speech after speech i think you might have heard his speeches yes. he goes into an exhaustive sort of length of all the welfare schemes and how it is sort of benefited x number of crore people this that the other so he does definitely talk about that but it also doesn't mean that the congress manifesto is going to get a free pass on uh, what could be an attempt to appease to undermine the secular fabric of this country i mean it's the congress that where talks is, the most well, one is, second well, let me doctor let right. me just finish my question yeah isn't it yeah. the congress that gets really worked up one second is it really the congress that gets worked up whenever anyone says that you know i think two words have had their day and they should be removed from the preamble one is secularism and the other is socialism constitution yeah. a living breathing document so it's not as if you know they are Im- completely immutable so i'm just asking you if they are so concerned about secularism then their vision document should be inclusive here there are large scale concern areas the supreme court for example has talked about the pernicious perniciousness of promising welfare schemes on the basis of religion you know it's ultra virus so why is it no, being no. done tom bedakan says to win a seat i no no first of all let me 
tell you something very significant that rahul gandhi actually said two days ago and he said as soon the, the very night on which the manifesto was released he actually made a statement he said we welcome your feedback if you like it tell us if you don't like it tell us what you don't like about it which i thought was absolutely splendid because the fact that so much of effort has gone into preparing this document so much of consultation Please answer my question sir does not make no 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 but my point is if there is anything that is ultra virus of the constitution obviously the matter will go to court and oh, obviously will take but care but, of it. but the problem is so the, the people who get okay dr ranganathan is raising his hand respond no, no, my, sanjay my, my jaff my point is is, is that reservation be. for that women a problem that is can't be sir for, tomorrow uh, i can say a problem but dr is raman is giving poor families below the poverty line 1 lakh a year a problem imprisoning women problem in give? patriarchy no, no. is a problem whether they are minority or they are majority Uh, dividing people on the basis Don't of religion promising them? no no Don't one second no no no, they, no i'm sorry by giving I, by giving sorry. a lot to raman, poor family no no money money giving? money will not even reach them that will be taken how immediately no, no, let me finish doctor doctor raman how do you, you know it you, you didn't you listen to me again how, okay go ahead what i'm saying is they land in land in their bank account they'll be asked to hand over that cash that's the nature of patriarchy women here are used sir don't forget by politicians I don't think when so they go to jail to keep Rahul. their seat hot that Rahul, is a, that is a kind of symbolism that has gone into part of india no 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 please sir there women, is women, hey, look look look, look. Women look. Make dr raman dr raman, dr. raman let's not be let's not be so blithe let's not be so blithe about the way males especially no no males have treated women from you know kashmir to kanyakumari let's not today blithely say that oh that Things is also a not changing, that uh, is also a not sir. well sir they're changing too changed. slowly and they need to yep, change in a manner no i'm sorry i i i i'm sorry sir you might have a daughter and you might have other women relatives they shouldn't be waiting around for the next 20 years and a two thirds majority from the minority community so that they can do x or y for themselves i don't think that works and we have seen it doesn't the congress education, lost election after election because of shabano and we know that female education empowers yes. them yeah. and southern india yes. has yes. got a significantly right. larger number of educated right. female population I, I sure, and sir. therefore sure. this whole argument sure. that the males will snatch yes. away all next this money next time next time next time you have hoodlums uh you know uh going out there and uh, attacking women for being in a pub etc etc we'll have that debate with you sir one minute dr rangana who's doing that dr rang it doesn't matter sir everyone does it let's not make this communal also please i'm not making yes, it yes dr rangana yeah so doctor stop to mantraman i have been hearing you very patiently you made some great points please listen three points very briefly number 1 Dr Raman said lot of effort has gone into making the 2024 congress manifesto is right but then again a lot of effort went into making the 2019 congress manifesto as well that promised abrogation of apmc i want to ask why is that missing from 2024 manifesto does congress no longer want to abrogate apmc and go back on its promise number 2 when dr raman says you know we are why are we vitiating with hindu muslim why not we talking of development this is but a fraction of as you correctly said rahul what the prime minister talks about in fact not even 1% the rest 99% of him and his people party colleagues are talking about the amazing developments that have happened in the last 10 years finally why should we or anybody else be scared about talking about appeasement and the discrimination against hindus i don't understand this why is religion a taboo why should we talk about that when nupur you know just mentions a few scriptures the whole army descends upon the streets out to behead her is that not an issue is that not an issue for the, example why did the bjp dump her please do not interrupt please why did not. the bjp let her down is that what i am talking about is that what i am talking about i was the one who criticized the bjp most for it not what we are talking we are saying that should be an issue okay any discrimination any appeasement no, belonging to yeah. religion because of religion should be an issue why should we not why talk about care? appeasement sanjay jha fault care. lines fault lines run deep also in america which sort of ascribes itself as the mother of all democracy there is a black and white fault line there there is a rich and poor fault Asasana. line there there is mm -hmm. unfortunately even a christian and muslim fault line and a jew and a muslim fault line in those mm -hmm. societies those issues are discussed openly even mm -hmm. foreign policy becomes 
uh, part of the domestic discourse. So why should we tuck away this little bit about secularism being warped in, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in a sort of a insidious way undermined? Well, let me tell you, Rahul, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about politics in a more transparent fashion. Yeah. Right. Yes. So here is my here is my question. Hmm. Mr. Modi, even before the first round of voting has happened, has brought up Ram Navmi, has brought up Ram Temple, has mentioned Muslim League. It tells you that there is a serious panic within a party okay. that should have been going to town saying we have I done think you know the context in which area. those, those anyway, remarks are made. Anyhow. Rah 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 Rahul, let me finish. I just yeah. won't take too long. Yeah. My second point mm. is this, that in if you look at the Muslim population in this country, I'm not even including the other minorities, by the way. Mm. If you include the entire minorities, we are around 300 million people right. uh, in this country who actually need, I think, you know, to be given protection and anything to make it a level playing field for them. The Muslim population in this country is the second highest after Indonesia. Hmm. OK, and are, is the Modi government actually trying to say that to basically talk about protecting whatever, you know, they're extremely socially disadvantaged or economically disempowered status right. today and giving them an opportunity <coughs> to get a level playing field is playing politics is right. vote bank. Well, is that, well, can, well, the Supreme Court that is imbued with wisdom out of every crevice, according to all the knowledgeable people in this country, doesn't see it that way. They don't want to make religion the basis of any policy. Even the CA, the Chief Justice of India's son, has a problem with on the fact that it discriminates supposedly, allegedly, on the basis of religion. So hang on, hang on, one second, one second, one second. That's Therefore, if you want to civilize society, then get out of the Muslim trap. Get out of the way, minority the appeasement trap. Get out of, get out well, of, get out of, get out, out no, no, get out and of undermining people. secularism in the manner it should be practiced in a modern society. Yes, very quickly, Dr. Ranganathan, I need to move on. Very significant. No, Rahul, the Hindu community point, is very Rahul, secure and confident. Point. Let me Sanjay tell you please. that. Sanjay Mr. Please, Modi can try and paint it otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Sanjay, yeah. Rah Rah Rahul, I'll tell you where this virtue signaling and saying minorities must be taken care of, protected, leads to. It leads to the Congress bringing on what it called the communal violence bill, wherever, whatever happened, the perpetrator would have been taken as the Hindu majority. I want to ask Sanjay, who was then not suspended, did he, was he or was he not a votary of the communal violence bill where only the Hindus will be held guilty? Anand, Anand, just okay. to give you an example, just to give an example, there are many states, Jammu and Kashmir is a, is a perfect example before you, where the Hindus are not in a majority. So please, for and God's sake, stop guilty. using it as a religious that's example. That's precisely why they were, that's precisely why. <laughs> That's precisely that why, why uh, Sanjay Jha. Not brought in. Yes, no, no, he, that he was precisely why eat. also he they were kicked out. Anyhow, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that, viewers. If the Congress was so concerned about minorities, how is it that Hindus are not given minority status in the Northeast, where it had governments for years altogether, or even Kashmir? Viewers, think about these things. I, I don't want to belabor the point too much. I think we're getting the drift of this particular debate. One important cornerstone of our constitution is secularism. And I think you would agree that people have a right to question if a particular party is undermining it. Just like the Congress and all its liberal sort of ecosystem leaps to always point out when the BJP steps on that live wire, which is called secularism. And why not, viewers? Why not? It should be done. And when the tables turn, it shouldn't whinge and whine. Anyhow, viewers, let's move on because this is a very important story. It could even mark a turning point and it comes, viewers, just a day ahead of Mr. Kejriwal's judgment on seeking relief, bail that is, tomorrow in court. And it's not what under the scanner in the Delhi excise policy alleged scam would have liked to have heard. A Delhi court not just declined to give bail to BRS leader and legislator K. Kavita, but also passed some searing comments against her that will worry the others, virtually confirming the ED had been able to prima facie establish that she was involved in the commission of alleged offences. The court also said that she had destroyed evidence viewers. Let me read out 
para 37 of this order. It says it appears that the applicant not only engaged in destruction of material evidence by formatting her phone before joining investigation and after being served with notice requiring her to do so, along with the digital devices which stands established by way of the forensic report, but has also been instrumental in influencing witnesses. And there is every likelihood of her continuing to do so in the case the relief prayed for is granted to her. Very, very significant viewers. Why would you be wanting to prima facie? Lean on witnesses, influence them if you had nothing to hide. Why would you want to destroy evidence, digital evidence, which is quite foolproof if you had nothing to hide? Then viewers, order para 48 says this. The material placed before this court in the course of arguments prima facie points towards her active involvement in commission of the alleged offences is also towards a deliberate act of causing destruction of evidence despite attempting to influence witnesses of the case. Viewers, this is very, very serious. Actively involved, influencing witnesses, destroying evidence, the court order has wider implications. K. Kavita is alleged to be the face of the influential South lobby that paid kickbacks allegedly to the AAP to the tune of 100 crores. If the ED has proof of this prima facie, it might become difficult for the AAP to distance itself from the alleged scam that allegedly leads to the door, at least that's what the ED says, of the two most senior bosses of the party. Viewers, it's not as if the courts have been particularly lenient towards the AAP either. The court has taken cognizance of charge sheet, prima facie accepting the ED case. On March 27, the Delhi court rejected Arvind Kejriwal's bail plea. On April 1, court orders Kejriwal's judicial custody till April 15. Tomorrow, of course, it will pronounce an order on granting him bail. Another hard fact, viewers, and I always bring you these hard facts so you get closer to the truth. The Supreme Court confirmed that the money trail of 338 crore against Manish Sisodia existed. Prima facie. Hard fact 5, the court denied bail to Sisodia at least 5 times and Vijay Nair at least 2 times. Viewers, let's open this up. This is not looking good. If you look at the wider implications. Now, I want to begin with uh, Mr. Ravula Sridhar Reddy, leader of the BRS. Now, sir, it has always been maintained by you that this case is a witch hunt, that the enforcement directorate has been you know, tweezed, tweaked, whatever, by the Prime Minister and his government to go after opposition leaders. Today, look at what the court is saying against Ms. K. Kavita while denying her relief. Says she, it appears that the applicant not only engaged in destruction of material evidence by formatting her phone, but has also influenced witnesses and there is a very likelihood of her continuing to do so. Why is she doing these two things? See, I mean, is it a final verdict that the court has given? <laughs> Only before the denial of a bail, they would have made these observations. But the trial will go on. The investigation is not completed. The defense <coughs> is not completed. This is only a denial of bail. And what is, what is so different than this, which was stated, with due respect to the judiciary and court, whatever has been, you know, published by the uh, many newspapers or a section of media. You know, the forget the newspapers. You, you don't have faith in the newspapers either, especially mainstream. I'm so I'm asking you, Mr. Reddy, please, I'm asking you the question Rahul, again. Rahul, you Rahul, alleged. No, no, sir, I, I understand, but you alleged. You alleged, and you have been alleging, Ms. K. Kavita has also alleged, that this is a witch hunt. Now, I'm asking you, sir, if it is a witch hunt, if K. Kavita Ji has nothing to hide, why is the court, therefore, today, pulling her up for destruction of material evidence by formatting her phones before joining investigation and after being served with notice requiring her to do so and, most importantly, sir, instrumental in influencing witnesses. And there is every likelihood of her continuing to do so. Can I ask you, sir, why? Rahul, whatever the you know, documents are the proof, whatever the ED claiming to be, 
based on the you know these these uh, documents produced before the ed produced before the court by ed court would have made some observations and at this juncture they have denied the bail but the investigation is not completed nobody is convicted yet can i ask you a question you, mr yeah. reddy if tomorrow she is given bail would you say that this is a sign of her non involvement even though the investigation will continue yeah of course yeah you see a bail is right. a rule and uh, jaise an exception it was said what so what, i'm asking you doing? mr reddy if she gets bail tomorrow will you be triumphant and say see we told you the case is hollow or will yeah. you say no 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 uh, you know the case has to still play out uh, she is still um, you know under the radar Uh, we can't say that she is innocent rahul, rahul, we so are, we will rahul, comply rahul we are matured enough huh. we are not like few other political parties where just by a denial of bail they confirm all the accused are criminals okay we okay. can say that the investigation will still continue okay. and we will try to face the legal battle and definitely will prove our innocence okay. in the entire field so Do dr rangnath I, mean, i suppose at today, the same time at the same time yes. now at the same time yes ruling party leaders and few other political party leaders jumping to the conclusions and deciding and giving judgments all the accused are criminals okay. keriwal is a criminal kavita is a criminal umar well, is well don't forget that in this matter the congress has also had to say a little bit about k kavita ji and her involvement so uh, that is a party that shares you know it's anyhow uh, dr ranganathan wants to come in and after that tom vadakkan and of course uh, the aap sympathizer Yes, uh, Rahul, I have great respect for Mr. Reddy. He is very erudite and intellectual. But I just want to say this, uh, without casting any aspersions on what he said, uh, we should all <coughs> must avoid muddying of waters. Now, it is no one's grouse, and Mr. Reddy is right that the trial is not yet finished. It may be that Miss Rao would come out unscathed and proven innocent. Absolutely, absolutely. But he must also admit that the trial. that was limited to her giving bail is finished that is why he is muddying the waters the judgment today pertains to whether she should be granted bail or not that trial is finished in a very limited sense and that trial went against her why because the primary conditions for giving bail is whether the accused will that accused destroy evidence a or b influence witness what did the court say i want to ask mr reddy i want to ask him is that trial of denying bail finished or not mr reddy yes or no of course yes i mean today thank you thank you the regular that's why bail, i respect you that is why i respect you sir that's mr. why i respect mr rangnathan mr rangnathan only one intervention this is only for an interim bail the regular bail plea is still pending for 20 years and she uh, again appealed the court to prepone it let's see i am okay. not saying uh, the uh, immediate bail plea was denied that's fine Okay. I'm not going to do that. Let let let's bring in the BJP spokesperson and Akashdeep Muni. Tom Vadakkan respond. Let's not get to cock a hoop says the BRS leader because this is only an interim bail. You should not also suggest that denying bail means there is culpability, there is guilt, etc. Well, bail is a normal uh, right for an individual. So, I mean, if she gets it, good enough. If she doesn't get it, the judiciary has a strong view on the matter. She, they have pronounced the fact that she is party to destroying evidence, um, formatting her mobile phone, and a variety of issues that have been raised. These are serious issues, Rahul. Um, you cannot deny it. And then she has a connect. uh with very important people connected with this investigation so it is due process of law will be followed mm -hmm. and i think nobody is jumping the gun at this juncture okay. let uh, let law take its own course let me bring in uh, akashdeep saab akashdeep saab now you see sanjay sanjay singh got bail and uh, he was very excited he came out of course you were also very excited that day and you have a right to be of course who doesn't want to see a long lost uh, uh, leader come out and i'm sure you were probably also there maybe gone to visit him etc etc at some point he's held many press conferences he's talked to many television channels and he's saying that look uh, this shows that the entire case is fake now if mr kejriwal tomorrow is denied bail and uh, k kavita 
is deemed uh, sort of instrumental as the court says arguments prima facie point towards their active involvement in the commission of alleged offenses. Now, what is this commission of alleged offense? It is the giving the ED claims of 100 crores in kickbacks being the face of the South lobby to whom? To the Aam Admi Party. Now, if there is evidence, then uh, this is a problem for you also. This shows that the case is not a fake one. Would you not agree? Uh, see, Rahulji, when the evidence comes to the fore in the court, you, me and all of India will know what evidence Enforcement Directorate has. Well, can I just stop you there? Muni Saab, I'll read out this order. The order says, the material placed before this court, clause 48, para 48, please open it, sir. Everyone has this now. Live law, you can see a portal, hai, sir, jo kafi log aajkal dekhte hain, minute to minute. You can live law, pe khol lije. Their, the entire order is there. Order para 48 says, the material placed before this court, so the material has been placed. In the course of arguments, prima facie points towards her active involvement. It's a problem, hai, sir. Hey, or not? My answer, sir. Uh, you are right. The material has been placed in uh, reference to K. Kavita's uh, bail plea. But uh, when it comes to K. J. Walji's bail plea, the material has not been yet placed in front of the Honorable Court. First. Second thing is that when it comes uh, uh, tomorrow... Sir, uh, Akashdeep sahab, I think you are forgetting. Uh, can I take you back to a few days when the judge asked the two lawyers to approach the bar, come to the back and show us prima facie, especially the enforcement directorate, ki what do you have against Mr. Kejriwal that you want his custody? And it was only yeah. after satisfying their curiosity and I'm not only saying this because they're being voyeuristic or anything I'm just saying that their intellectual curiosity so that they could pronounce an order it came out and said sorry we can't uh, give you bail sir you have to go into custody so there too sir I will remind you a little bit Prima Fasai ED has placed some material placed it has considered the court the court said yes Prima Fasai is a problem now sir देखिए जो भी कोर्ट के प्रोसीडिंग्स में नोट डाउन नहीं हुआ है उसको ना ये तो हुआ है सर कर सकते क्या ये प्रोसीडिंग्स में है लिखा हुआ है ये लिखा हुआ है सर मैं बता रहा हूँ नहीं प्रोसीडिंग्स इन्होंने प्रोसीडिंग्स में नहीं है ये उन्होंने जो एविडेंस दिखाया वो कोर्ट के प्रोसीडिंग्स में नहीं रीड आउट हुआ सर आपने ऑर्डर पढ़ा है इट इज आई हैव रेड दैट ऑर्डर क्लियरली पढ़ा है अच्छा कितने पेजेस हैं नहीं आप प्लीज मेरा जनरल नॉलेज जस्टिफाई ना करें जनरल नॉलेज नहीं सर अगर आपने पढ़ा होता ना इतने वो डिफिकल्टली नहीं नहीं मैं बताता हूँ दे सो टॉर्चुअस दिस ऑर्डर्स दैट यू वांट टू यू वांट यू 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 मेमोराइज ईच पेज दैट यू रीड कहीं भैया फिर से ना पढ़ना पड़े एनीहाउ डॉक्टर � <laughs> I, I, uh, on, a, on, a, on a lighter note, I, I noticed with uh, alacrity yeah. how my good friend Tom Ji yeah. was quite kind towards Kavita Ji because who knows, she might join the BJP tomorrow. <laughs> I'll leave it at this. A lot of possibilities. A quick break, viewers. I'm right back with more news. Don't go away. Do you see this, uh, you know, this, this change is some sort of an irony. Your grandfather, who's an iconic figure, his history and his legacy deeply rooted in the struggle of the farmers. Your decision of, you know, allying with the BJP also comes against the backdrop of simmering discontent in the farming community against the present regime. And uh, the main demand that you would uh, also know is, of, of course, the rising sugarcane crisis, but predominantly pan-India, it has been to give a legal guarantee on MSP. Do you feel in some sort of a way a little conflicted with allying with a party and also having to, you know, be the torchbearer of See, not the farmers' all. community? Because you are a very recognizable uh, we, face amongst that community as well. I understand your question. We have to engage with the policy makers. At least today when there are farmers, you know, who have their demands, they are able to put it to government. People in government, people in BGP should not feel that they are our enemies. 
coming from the inside from sharing my perspective or what i have you know sat through with them in meetings their perspective it's not that they have any adversarial attitude towards farmers they recognize the contribution of farmers and they want to do more for that community for agriculturalists did you feel the same when you were in the opposition of course see government will take decisions some of them are good decisions they are providing direct support 6000 rupees direct to everyone whether whatever your caste is where you come from you're a hindu or muslim doesn't matter you're a farmer that has been recognized straight to your account government is providing some support maybe meager may not be what is required but it is a commitment and therefore even the bharat ratna decision in a way it recognizes the spirit of this government and the approach so not at all i'm not putting any uh, you know it's not with a heavy heart i've taken this decision i've taken it with a lot of hope and farmers of this country must have hope the third regime and the third term that we are seeking thrice a big mandate we are going to the people with yes if we get that mandate definitely a lot of good will come out of that and and do you feel that being in the government would perhaps enable you to address those grievances of the farmer being that will being be the attempt that in is in the alliance with a government that is in power you feel that would that is you? our sole purpose that is our uh, unequivocal i'm i'm saying it openly that is our sole purpose that is why if we are in government we are there for a reason jenji i was in uh, i spent a lot of time in bagpat and also in other adjoining areas in saharanpur uh you have two seats from where your party will be contesting bijnor and bagpat it, both these places have a sizable muslim population bijnor uh, especially 5 and a half lakhs plus uh 3 and a half lakhs of non muslims taken now um about the citizenship amendment act the opposition has been extremely critical of the same they have been saying it's discriminatory divisive against the constitutional ethos i want to know your stand your party stand your party stand as you go into the elections in those these two places because when i was speaking to the community in bagpat at least they of course say that they would goes to the rld uh they were unequivocally clear about that but yes there were reservations about the bjp as well how does rld sometimes policy measures to build a deeper understanding of what is the intent behind such measures needs to be given time for people at the grassroots to truly understand what it means to them i think ca is one of those issues it's not about denying anyone's citizenship as much it is it about according rights to people who have been persecuted in our neighboring countries so from a human uh, rights perspective it is a positive move do you see this uh, you know this this change is some sort of an irony your grandfather who's an iconic figure his history and his legacy deeply rooted in the struggle of the farmers your decision of you know aligning with the bjp also comes against the backdrop of simmering discontent in the farming community against the present regime and uh, the main demand that you would uh, also know is of, of course the rising sugarcane crisis but predominantly pan india it has been to give a legal guarantee on msp do you feel in some sort of a way a little conflicted with aligning with a party and also having to you know be the torch bearer of See, not the farmers all. community because you are a very recognizable uh, we, face amongst that community as well i understand your question we have to engage with the policy makers at least today when there are farmers a tough fight here in this constituency you have you are fighting against a three term mp and a very senior leader of the cpim dr thomas isaac and uh, the mp anto antony what do you think are your advantages what will work in your favor here so now it's almost four weeks it's over a month since i have been declared as a candidate here and now we are entering the most important phase the last three weeks i came here and i've been interacting with people across the society here across all people uh, from all age groups all political uh, spectrum and one thing i understood very clearly is that the people here clearly want change 
like you rightly said, there are two uh, heavyweights who are contesting as my uh, rivals. One is Mr. Anto Anthony, who is a three-time MP. Last 15 years, he is the MP here. Then there is Dr. Thomas Isaac, who had been an MLA many times. He had been an MLA many times. He is a former finance minister also. But you look at the state of the state here and the state of the constituency here, one thing which we can clearly understand is that the people here won't change. You have, I came here and I was very surprised to see the state of the constituency. And this is one of the, um, per capita wise, this is one of the constituencies with the highest per capita incomes. You have one of the highest number of NRI populations across India. And despite all that, despite such a, a place with such uh, high quality people and potential, you look at what has been happening in this place, I can very clearly say, confidently say that uh, the place hasn't reached even a fraction of its potential. Namaste, Jai Hind and welcome to this edition of The Right Stand. I'm Anand Narsimhan. The Sensex and Nifty started the week with a bang, hitting fresh lifetime highs, tracking positive cues from the US and other Asian markets and expectations of a stronger earnings season at home. The Sensex jumped a whopping 600 points to reach an all-time high of 74,869 points. Now, with the markets at an all-time high, foreign institutional investors and foreign portfolio investments are also pouring money into the market here in Bharat. On the back of robust economic growth, FII's, FPI's investment is likely to stay strong in FY25. Recent data suggests that foreign investors brought in a staggering amount of over 3 lakh crore in FY24, the highest ever investment so far. The Reserve Bank of India survey conducted in March 2024 reveals that consumer confidence for the year ahead has improved. Household sentiments on the general economic situation and employment prospects recorded notable improvements. The respondent said their income situation was better compared to just about a year ago and expected a further rise in income in the year ahead. Now, with 1,50,000 new direct jobs from the PLI scheme, Bharat's Apple ecosystem now pioneers an employment.